We're a very humble company and didn't have even a humble brag. So we're learning how to tell our story and, and brag a little bit about the work we're doing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The New Rules of Work, where we explore the changing nature of work and what that means for all of us, for employees and employers. Today, I am really excited to be speaking with Amy Goldfinger, SVP of Global Talent Acquisition at Walmart, where she leads the effort every day to attract market-making talent. So Amy, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to be here, Catherine. When you think about recruiting and hiring at scale, there is there is no bigger company than Walmart, and it's the, the largest private employer in the world with 2.2 million employees. I mean, there are countries with fewer citizens than Walmart has employees. And so I'm really excited to, to dig in and really understand more about how you and your team think about talent, culture, and employer brand at a company that's more than 50 years old. Maybe a good place to start is, um, is talking a little bit about your career journey. And so what led you to your current role at Walmart? Well, it was a very unexpected and exciting call to hear from Walmart. And what I found is a culture that is incredibly authentic and down to earth. We have several key values that I also saw firsthand at, at play in every conversation. So the level of consistency in which people showed up authentically was really impressive specifically how we respect individuals, we serve our customers, and we strive for excellence. Our leaders really live that every day. That was a really significant draw. And, and the second piece was the mission of the company, which I also was not aware of as an innocent bystander. The commitment to helping people save money so they can live better permeates everything that we do. And it shows up in a lot of different ways. You know, 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart. And when there is a natural disaster, um, hurricanes, fires in Chico, we're one of the first places that people go when they need help and support and resources. So last year, we donated over $12 million to help those impacted by Hurricanes Florence and Michael. And when you're in meetings, our leadership meetings, that's the first thing we're talking about. How do we help people who are in need? That last bit is fascinating because I was, you know, doing some of the research ahead of this episode. I, I kept coming across this, you know, very famous phrase that Walmart has, which is our people make the difference. I'm sure over the history of Walmart, that phrase has evolved. How has it changed throughout the years and what does it mean today? It all started um, when our founder coined the phrase and actually built our annual shareholder meeting. In 1979, he used that phrase, our people make the difference, as the moniker. He had badges created that, that he wore, and then soon it began appearing in a lot of different places. And it, it's really one of the legacies of, of Sam Walton. And so to your point, it's still very present. We brought the phrase back in our, on our name badges, and badges are a special part of Walmart. If you think about walking into a Walmart store and looking for a Walmart-badged employee, it's meaningful. And so in 2016, he put the phrase, we put the phrase on our badges, and that coincided with a pretty deliberate series of investments in our workforce. We invested in wages, education, and training. We're still very active in giving people access to education and career opportunity. We also changed our benefits, 16 weeks of parental leave for, for birth mothers. And, you know, it just, we're living it. And despite being the largest private employer, it really comes down to individual people. I love that idea that, you know, even at scale, it's, it's each individual person's experience. And you touched on this a little bit in, in the last answer, but I'd love if you just go a little bit deeper into how is Walmart changing as a business? Yeah, change has become the daily mantra. We're reinventing, you know, the shopping and consumer experience and also how people get their health care and access to other financial services. So we're really touching people's lives in so many different ways. We are incubating companies from start to launch. And we have what we call store number eight, which was Sam Walton's store of the future, sort of um, test and learn space. And we've continued that tradition in today's store number eight, which does incubate all of our businesses. And then oftentimes they end up becoming standalone businesses. So All's Well was our first homegrown digital brand. 
And it's been a phenomenal success. It's a design centric home brand. I use their sheets. I love them. <laughs> and we're also using robotics and AI to, pr- to gain efficiencies and um, allow our associates to do other work, you know, leaning on robots to, to do some everyday tasks like scanning. As I mentioned, I think change also comes again with our benefits as we, as we, t- as we talked about. You can attend college for a dollar a day through Walmart. Oh, I didn't know that. Quite a benefit. I was going to say, that's not what it costs most people to attend college. (laughs) I know. And we have a thousand patents to our name. So there's just, the change is, is dramatic. And as it relates to attracting candidates, I think we are in a really great position. The only opportunity we have is to tell our story. Because just like my own personal experience when I joined, I didn't know all of the transformation and innovation that was happening within Walmart. So when we do have the chance to tell our story, we're attracting some very talented talent out there. We're a very humble company, so we're not the type of organization to, frankly, brag about what we're doing. It's a little bit of a new muscle for us to really talk about it. So when I came in to lead talent acquisition, one of my questions was, how, how do you think about how we will tell our story when traditionally you had been quite humble and didn't have even a humble brag? So we're mm-hmm. learning how to tell our story and, and brag a little bit about the work we're doing for society, for our customers. It's all coming together. It's a cool story. It's so true because I remember the first time that one of my friends in the technology industry said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm taking a job at Walmart Labs. And I was like, wait, what? And just yes. learning some of the the different initiatives that I think uh, a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of. When you talk about telling a story, something that I've spent uh, a lot of time thinking about and that that's very core to our mission at The Muse is being authentic, uh, having an authentic employer brand, understanding uh, how a company can talk about itself in a way that rings true with the experience of employees. And what does that mean for you and for your role at Walmart? You know, it's the reality of who we are. We're such a large organization and yet it's really about individuals and their own how they show up but it is it is a strength and an advantage the other piece around being authentic is giving people a chance to have a great deal of accountability so if you look at Doug McMillan our CEO John Ferner these are two individuals who started on the, in the stores and authenticity is also giving people a chance to be themselves build their careers, test and learn. One example is in our distribution centers in the U.S., a couple of our associates just had noticed that the stool they used to load products into our trailers were too short and too heavy. And they just made a very simple suggestion of a lighter stool. And we will save $30 million, which we will pass on to our customers, by swapping out the existing stool with a lighter weight version. One turn of the dial at Walmart, one change of a simple stool can have meaningful impact. And so part of, I think, being authentic ties very closely to asking people to provide input and make suggestions for ways of doing things better, more efficiently. I always equate... (laughs) being authentic with being on a date, <laughs> you know, <laughs> show up, be yourself. <laughs> and we, no, we definitely approach it that way. It's such a spot on analogy because, you know, I, I remember when I was first uh, in the early days of the muse, I was first going out to companies and, you know, I talked to someone and they were like, well, we, we just like to pretend that like everything's perfect here. And I was like, you know, it's like dating, right? If you don't show up as yourself, you're just going to have a bunch of really disappointing first or second dates. Don't go anywhere because um, because you're not being true to who you are. And I think that's uh, <laughs> that's such a such a great analogy. <laughs> and so that kind of leads me to one of my next questions, which is I've heard a fair bit about this idea of radical transparency. How do you show candidates what radical transparency looks like? You know, it starts with the C-suite and it goes down to the shop floor. I tell candidates oftentimes, go into our store, 
experience that. When we when I go on store tours with our leaders, you will see the radical transparency. There will be three things that are going really well and three things that need to be improved. It's ironic as I was thinking about this before we got together, Catherine, I thought, you know, ironically, you can't fake authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so there's really just showing and showing up. Yeah. And and to your point, I mean, showing is so much better than telling when it comes to things like this, because I found sometimes like I can talk till I am blue in the face and then you just bring somebody into an environment or, uh, you know, give them a kind of taste of the day in the life. And it's like, oh, OK. You know, it it all sort of falls into place. Yes. Before people come in, when I have the opportunity and the fortune of of speaking with them, I tell them a lot about our common traits in the organization around altruism. And it's a very common trait in our leaders. In fact, when we when we do assessments and we look at the data, it tells us that, in fact, most of our leaders score pretty high on altruism. So just helping people. But they also score very high on commercial orientation. So they're also very business minded. And I tell people to, you know, read Sam Walton's book and get a sense of where that started, where those traits were born with his vision of the company and how they play out when you come into our offices or distribution centers and you and you get a sense for it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the new rules of work. You know, if, if anybody's interested in learning more, perhaps uh, this conversation has piqued their interest, where should they go? Visit our website and look for our job postings. And you know what? Walk into our stores. Check it out. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Amy. I really appreciate it. And to all of you who are listening, thank you so much for your time. And we'll see you next week. You've been listening to the new rules of work. To learn more about this episode and to research companies and jobs, visit themuse.com. To ensure you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you have any questions for The Muse or for host Catherine Minshew, feel free to reach out to press at themuse.com. Thank you for listening. Until next time.